Hi, in this video we're going to show that pi is equal to 2 times the square root of 3 times this infinite series. And I've already done this and the original problem did have a hint. And the hint was to use the power series for arc tangent. Okay, so we're going to start uh, down that route and I'm going to show you how I figured it out. So I guess I could say proof or I could say solution. I'll say solution. I'm just going to show you how to come up with this really cool formula. So the hint that was given in the original question was to use the power series for arc 10. So first recall that when we're dealing with power series, this is really useful. If you have one over one minus X, this is equal to the infinite sum as N goes from zero to infinity of X to the N. And this is valid if the absolute value of X is less than one. And so the original hint uh, in this problem was to use the power series for arc 10. So arc 10 doesn't look like this. However, if you take arc tangent and you take its derivative, you get one over one plus x squared. So what we'll do is we'll find a power series for this function, which is the derivative of arc tangent, and then we'll integrate and that will give us the power series for arc tangent. Then once we have the power series for arc tangent, we can try to see if we can come up with this really cool equation for pi. So here we have one over one minus x. So basically you can rewrite this to make it fit this form. I can write this as one over one minus negative x squared. Really beautiful, right? So now this whole thing here is your x and you can apply this formula. This is equal to the infinite sum as n runs from zero to infinity of negative x squared to the n. And this is valid if the absolute value of negative x squared is less than one. Okay, very, very nice. So now we have um, this here. So there's really a one here. So we can write this as follows. Arc 10 x prime is equal to the infinite sum as n runs from zero to infinity. And then this will be negative one to the n and then here you multiply it to n. If that's confusing, let me just let me just show you up here. If you have negative x squared to the n, that's really negative one times x squared to the n, okay? And so that's really negative one to the n, x squared to the n, which is really negative one to the n, x to the two n. So just some manipulation with exponents. Eventually you get to the point where you look at this and you just, you know, you go from here to here, especially if you've, you're used to working with series. All right, so now we're going to integrate both sides of this. When we do that, we are going to get just simply arc tangent over here. Let me just sharpen my pencil for a moment, mid video. <laughs> I think I need to get a new pencil. This one is, it's really, it's like a little stubby, stubby pencil. All right, um, here when we integrate, we ignore the negative one in the n here. This is like a constant. So basically you're integrating with, re with respect to x. So you just use the power rule in this piece. So this is the infinite sum as n runs from zero to infinity, negative one to the n. And then here you add one and then divide. And then you're supposed to add a constant of integration, capital C, because um, we're integrating. Now um, our this is valid as long as this is true, which means basically that this is true, which means basically that this is true. So as long as the, this is valid, as long as this is true, this equation is valid. So I wanna get rid of this C, so what I'll do is I'll plug in zero because zero certainly satisfies this condition. So if I plug in zero, I get arc tan of zero. And then if you plug in zero here, all of these are gonna be zero also because zero, like for the first term, it'll be zero to the one, which is zero. And the rest of them will also be zero. So all of this is zero. And arc tan of zero is zero. So we just get, right, this is zero. So we just get C equals zero. So we have the arc tangent of X is equal to, so we just came up with the power series for arc 10. Okay, which, which, which the hint was to use um, the power series for arc 10 to, to come up with this identity, which I'm gonna write down again in a second. So now we have to use this 
to come up with the identity. I feel like I should get another piece of paper really soon here because I'm running out. So the identity that we have to show is pi equals two square root three, infinite sum, n equals zero to infinity, negative one to the n, two m plus one to the three n. That's the identity that we're trying to show. We're trying to show that pi is equal to all of that and we have to use this. So basically that's the hint. Use this to come up with this. And you can kind of see like once you have the hint, it's really not that hard because look, two m plus one, two m plus one. So I was thinking like, okay, what's gonna give me a square root of three, right? So um, I decided to use this fact. If you have the tangent of pi over six, okay, that's equal to, well, tangent is sine over cosine, so it's sine of pi over six over cosine of pi over six. That's gonna be one half over square root of three over two. So that's one half times two over square root of three. So that's one over the square root of three. Of course, if you have it memorized, you don't have to do all that, but I wanted to go through it just to show you, like same thing, I could have just written this down, but I wanted to show you how to come up with it, just so you know. So the tangent of pi over six is that. So that means that the arc tangent of one over root three, okay, is equal to pi over six. By the way, uh, one over root three is a valid number for our, for our formula because it satisfies this inequality, right? One over root three is certainly less than one. So now what we're gonna do is I'm going to take this and plug it in here. So plugging in x equals one over root three into this equation, okay, into this equation here, we have pi over six equals the infinite sum as n runs from zero to infinity of negative one to the n. And then we're gonna plug in one over root three for the x. We did that here and that gave us pi over six, right? Because of this. So this will be one over root three to the two m plus one over two m plus one. Now there's some stuff with exponents here which is really easy to get lost in. So um, let me just do it over here so I don't clutter the problem. So I'm gonna focus on this piece here. One over the square root of three to the two m plus one can be written like this because one to the two m plus one is one. And then this is really one over the square root of three to the two n times the square root of three. And the square root of three to the two n is just three to the n because you can do this. You can do square root of three squared to the n. So it's just three to the n, right? Because properties of exponents say you can do that. Two n is the same as this, okay? So this is really just one over three to the n square root of three. So this is equal to the infinite sum as n runs from zero to infinity of negative one to the n over, and then we just have this on the bottom. So we have the square root of three, three to the n, two m plus one. Let's multiply by six. We have pi is equal to six. You can pull this out over root three, infinite sum, n runs from zero to infinity, negative one to the n over two m plus one, three to the n, right? And you see, it's almost what we, what we need. We need this, right? You see that? We've got, we've got the negative one to the n, we've got the three to the n, we've got the two. The only, the only issue is this, but you can rationalize that, right? You can, because if you have six over root three, I'll do it down here. Six over root three, you can do this. So it's this, square root of three, square root of three is three. Boom, so that's equal to two root three infinite sum and runs from zero to infinity, negative one to the n over two m plus one, three to the n. And we said that's equal to pi. So that's it, right? Pi is equal to this. So kind of a cool um, problem, right? And uh, I, you know, without the hint, um, how do you do it? I, I, I guess you just have to <laughs> know that, oh, it kind of resembles a power series uh, for arc 10 evaluated at some number. I mean, that, I mean that's an idea, I guess. But kind of cool that pi is equal to this infinite sum. And there's other really cool identities for pi. Maybe I'll, I'll try to figure out some other ones. But yeah, that's how I was able to figure this out. The hint, again, was to use the power series for arc 10. So came up with it from scratch and then went through the process. Hopefully, um, even if this video didn't completely make sense, 
hopefully some of it made sense and hopefully you've learned something from it. So kind of a fun, interesting problem. Good luck.